Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how you can design a system so that you can isolate its communications in order to break up the integrated integrated IADS. <laughs> so as you know in uh, command right here, any unit that's on a side that is not jammed has the ability to communicate to all the units that are near it. So in this case, uh, we've taken our lovely little city here and uh, we've made some quick little modifications here. I'm actually going to shut this off to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, let's go ahead and shut off the city names there. It's just a bit too much. Ah, much better. So right now we have it set up. Uh, we have these three SA2 sites and we have one SA5 site, which as you know, has quite a bit of reach here, which uh, gives it a huge advantage. And we have a target sighted over in the distance. Now, normally in command, all these units talk to each other automatically. So if this unit right here is able to identify this particular target, uh, we're kind of busted because that immediately will spend that message over to the SA5. The SA5, which already has this all acquired, has all got it all locked up, ready to go, will immediately fire and go ahead and engage on our target because it was able to make the ID and because this WRA allows that to happen. Now, sometimes you don't want that to happen. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do that as designers. Uh, one thing we could do is we could come to any unit. We go ahead and right click on it. We could do and make this come over here. You've got all these unit properties and stuff like that. You've got your unit proficiencies. You've got all these other items. You can, of course, can come in here and attempt to separate this unit with communications. Now, one of the things you have to remember when you do that is when you go into the scenario features, you have to go ahead and design it so that the communications can be disrupted. So when I press that now, we now have the ability to modify it. So I'm going to right click. Scenario editor, you have this thing that says out of comms. Now this is pretty cool because uh, basically what this would enable us to do is if we enabled that, we now can only see that unit's perspective. If we were to go ahead and actually click on it now, we could go up and view what it can see versus what other people can see, which actually is a pretty wild little way to go ahead and do this. The problem with this particular method is, is we'd have to actually go in here and show its POV, which you can see now, it can only see what it can see over here. So unfortunately for us, we'd have to go through and right click and do that to all of these. That is totally an acceptable method for that particular purpose. The downside to that though, is what if we want to simulate damage? Now in the professional version of command, we have the ability to actually disrupt communications. If I were to click on this unit real quick, I'll go ahead and grab this one. Apparently I have two of them here. I'm famous for that apparently. Boop. Whoopsies, eh, it doesn't matter, we'll go grab another one. If we actually have this one right here and we come up here real fast, we'll notice if we go to comms that it has no communications on it. That would mean if we struck this particular target with a weapon that didn't kill it, let's say we hit it with a harm, for example, it wouldn't ever, ever, ever come off the line here because there's no communication systems to actually disrupt. So if we were to come in here and add a communications device, this is when things will instantly start to change a little bit on us. Now there's plenty of different options that we have here. You know, we've got data links, obviously we wouldn't want anything like that. We have satellite navigations, we have link 18, we have all sorts of different communications here. But if we want to keep things really, really simple for us today, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab ourselves a good old fashioned UHF. <laughs> Let's see, we have a couple different versions. We have unsecure, we have secure. Doesn't really make that big of a difference. Okay, now that I have added a radio to this unit, that now means if anything happens to this radio, it will automatically drop off the communications line here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna grab this guy, hit his sensors real fast. And I'm gonna put a really, really, really nice uh, radar, not radar, I'm gonna put a nice uh, low light TV on here to make it so it can see really, 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 really well here. Let's see here, target tracking identification. I like that. That's gonna give us a much, much, much better view of this guy, which would then relay it over to this one over here. So let me go ahead and unpause real quickly here. So uh, we go ahead and see a target over there and notice that our radar is having no difficulty kind of picking it up here. I'll give it just a few moments as they get a little bit closer in the range. I'm also going to confirm that my SA5 can't cheat here. We want to make sure under its sensors, it does not have a television screen. It doesn't, which means that it has to use the SA2 to go ahead and identify that particular incoming target. So go ahead and click on it. Obviously, we're tracking it with the odd pair, the spoon rest. Oh, there we go. Stop. Ah. So now you'll notice that my SA2 is able to identify this particular target. It was uh, recognizing it as a multi-role. Notice at this range, we don't have a lot of information about the target. We have to get a little bit closer in order to identify it a little bit better. But the point is, is that we now identify it as a multi-role aircraft, which can now be uh, referred over to our SA5 to go ahead and engage. Now let's say my SA2 site received some battle damage. You know, it was under attack or something like that, and uh, something went wrong and it broke its communications data link. So if I destroy that right there, give that a few moments to sink in for it to realize what has happened, and you'll notice it has dropped off the communications network, which now means this particular target, as it's received battle damage, is no longer able to feed information to the rest of the integrated air defense system. That now means that if I click on this guy real quickly, 
I'm having no difficulties detecting him with my actual arm. A big, big old SA5 here. But you'll notice now I'm no longer receiving any information at all from this SA2 battery because he has dropped off the air. So this is a massive problem here because now this SA5 doesn't know whether or not to fire. And of course, our little SA2 crew might have all the information in the universe to understand what that target is and could even be planning to fire or even actually take a shot, but it won't be able to actually take a look at it because of the fact that it can't feed that information back into its link because it had a communications network that has now been destroyed. So in this case, uh, as we get a little bit closer here, we'll probably be able to get a little bit more identification on it. This particular one, I'm looking at this one, obviously we're picking it up with that one, but you could see just how powerful and just how effective that technique is at breaking up an integrated air defense system that's pre-built in. Now, some people will say, can I just write a script that makes it so if uh, something happens, it just disconnects everybody? Sure, this is just a really, really quick and easy way to simulate battle damage that can also disrupt communications. Enjoy.